So let's understand what this for h and what is this statement inside this. This looks weird, right? Yeah, I know we have worked with lambda expression. It looks like lambda expression, but what is happening behind the scene? To understand that, what I will do is I will just remove the entire for loop. We don't need that. And let me just push this down. This will be required later once we talk about how do we stream API. But at this point, let's only focus on for each here. So what I will do is, first of all, I will remove this section. Or maybe I can just comment it so that we can use, we can see this later. Here at this point, let's try to use nums. So when I say nums dot, you can see there is a method called for each. Now for each method, if you see, and if you go to this definition, for each basically got introduced in 1.8, okay? And what it basically does is, it takes an object of consumer. You can see for each method, okay, let me just go to definition itself. So you can see for each method, takes an object of a consumer. Okay, that sounds weird, right? Let's see what this consumer is. So if I want to work with for each, I need to create object of consumer, okay? So the, way, the moment you say you have to create object, I can simply say consumer, and you can see consumer is a interface uh, which belongs to a package java.util.function, okay? That's new. And this is a interface which is a functional interface. So that means lambda expression will be applicable. And the only method we have to work with this is accept, okay? That means I have to create object of consumer, which takes the type of integer, because if you see the consumer interface, you have to specify type as well. So I will say consumer integer, and then I will come back here. Let me say uh, con is equal to, how do I create an object of it? It's very simple, you can say new consumer. Now, since this is the interface, we have to define the class which is anonymous class. Okay, that is also simple. The only thing is we have to define a method also. The method name is public, void, is it void? Let me just check once. Consumer has a method called accept, which is of type void, okay, which returns a void. And the method name is accept, I will say that. And then it takes the integer value, I mean, whatever type you mention, I will say integer, let's say n. Okay, now the thing is, once you got this consumer object, you can simply pass an object in this. I can simply say con. So for each needs an object and we are passing the object of consumer. Our job is done, right? The thing is, when you talk about for each, what it does is it gives you one value at a time, okay? Now, whatever value you are getting here or for each is giving you, that goes into this consumer object. And the consumer object has only one method, which is accept, okay? Now this accept will accept a number. That's right, the for each will give you a number, right? That goes into this n. Now you can decide what you want to do this with n. Okay, I would say I want to just, I just want to print it. I mean, that's your choice. You can do whatever you want to do with this n. At this point, I'm just printing it, okay? And now let's see if this works. I will just go back and clear the screen, compile, run. And you can see it is working. You, you are able to print all the values. Okay, and, and you can see the entire code, all the other codes are commented. So they are not running, this code is running and it is printing all the values. Makes sense. Now we also know that the consumer interface is a function interface, which means we can use lambda expression here. That also means from here to here, we can delete this part. Let's delete that. Let's delete this curly brackets. And I hope till this point you have, you got a mastery in lambda expression. And I can give an arrow here. That looks good. And since we only have one statement, you don't need to put curly brackets. I will remove that as well. And I can write everything in one line. That looks cool, right? And then we don't even have to mention the integer here. And we don't even have to mention a bracket when you have only one variable. Makes sense, right? Let's see if this works. After doing all those changes, compile and run, there's no problem. Now, what we're doing is we are assigning this expression to con, right? Now, whenever we have con, we can actually use this. So instead of using con here, I can simply use this particular code and replace this con. And that's it. We don't even have to create a reference for con, uh, the consumer. And this is what we have seen earlier, right? If you compare the earlier example, this looks similar. In fact, exact same. So that's how your for each works. It gives you the value. That is your n, and you can do whatever you want to do with that n. You can print it, you can add it, you can save that in database. That's your choice. Okay, so that's how basically we use a forage. Now, once you understand forage, let's go for the actual stream API.